In its path from falling as rain to returning back to the ocean, water makes its way through the land. Creeks, streams, rivers are passageways that water takes to get to the sea. But sometimes something amazing happens. In its trip, the land changes and the water drops suddenly, a waterfall. Humans love waterfalls. They are often tourist attractions because of their beauty, and it's very common to see them in works of art and on calendars. You might think of waterfalls as these tranquil, calm features of a landscape, but really... Waterfalls are really cool and noisy. But what are waterfalls and how are waterfalls formed? Today, we're going to talk about it. Let's start with what a waterfall is, which unusually, we don't have a super clear definition. Of course, it's when a river or stream drops into a vertical or near vertical fall, but other than that, there isn't a clear agreed upon definition. Waterfalls are geological features. They are parts of the environment and many geological features have their own area of study dedicated to them. The study of rivers, for example, is potomology and the study of marshes and wetlands is teltomology. The study of lentic systems, including lakes, is limnology, but there is no specific field for studying waterfalls. So when it comes to the definitions and classifications, there is a lack of agreement for the terminology that we use, but that's not the focus of this video. Waterfalls can take many different shapes and sizes and well, structures. Waterfall enthusiasts have words for different kinds of waterfalls, such as plungers, fans, blocks, tiers, horsetails, segmented ribbons, shoots, and slides. But for the bigger question of today, how are waterfalls formed? How does a river or stream stop running on a gentle downhill and become a waterfall? Water, while it might seem soft and smooth and that it'll just flow over something easily, well, I suppose it will. But if there's enough water and enough time, it begins to shape the landscape. When rain hits the earth, it causes an impact and can cause very small particles of stone or soil to be broken off and transported with the water as it moves downhill towards the ocean. As water gains speed and gains aggregate, aggregate being these tiny bits of soil and stone, it gains kinetic energy, which is the energy something has as it's in motion. The water itself will over time cause rock to be worn away, but the aggregate in the water helps along the way. Some materials erode faster than others. Soil and sand are very easy to erode as water basically washes it away. Softer stones such as sandstone or limestone are also more susceptible to erosion and harder stones such as granite take a lot more time and energy to erode. Over millions of years, this has quite a profound effect on the environment. Let's see a demonstration of this. Land is formed through tectonic activity. It could be volcanic, it could be through to earthquakes, pushing plates together, but it's not a uniform process. And so there is lots of different kinds of rocks. I have some hard rocks in here. I've also got some soft rocks, which is uh, just sand for the purpose of this demonstration because I don't want to be sitting here for hundreds of thousand years pouring water on it waiting for a waterfall to form. So we're going to do a little bit faster. So I am going to emulate rain and we're going to see if we can get a waterfall to form. Okay, so the rain is going to fall on our mountain and we'll kind of pull at the top there and start soaking down. But, oh, it's starting to flow, oh, it's starting to flow faster as it gets, oh. and all of a sudden, I need some more water. So the soft sand has eroded faster than the hard stone, and you can see that we have some waterfall action happening just down there, where the sand has left the hard rock, and it is now falling over the rock in a free fall. It is a waterfall. There we go. It's pretty cool. So as it rained on our mountain, we saw that the soft rock, or the sand today, 
flowed over, it eroded faster over the hard rock, which is still pretty well in place. And as it did this, it started to erode faster. The slope started to get steeper and we formed a waterfall. That's pretty cool. Once the drop is formed, water gains momentum, causing this process to accelerate. Eventually, a plunge pool forms. This often gets deeper as the waterfall continues to build. Over time, the waterfall may even develop an undercut where the water has eroded all the soft rock on the cliff and just the hard rock remains. This is why you can sometimes walk behind waterfalls, but hard rock isn't immune to erosion. Given enough water and time, the hard rock will erode too. This is why river stones are often very smooth and the rock the watercourse runs over is smooth and why waterfalls actually move backwards. The hard rock erodes and the waterfall retreats upstream. This generally happens very slowly, but it does happen. Niagara Falls, for example, retreats between 30 and 40 centimetres a year and it's much slower now than it was. It wasn't that long ago when it moved backwards a metre per year. Lots of fast moving water has lots of momentum and force and erodes things more quickly. So, because the land itself isn't uniform, and the rocks and soil that make up the land vary in hardness over time, waterfalls form. And it results in the beautiful sights that we see today. But these sights are always changing. Waterfalls aren't fixed things. As erosion occurs, the water course changes. The waterfall moves. The plunge walls get deeper. Many things collapse. It takes a long time to make a waterfall, but on a geological timescale, waterfalls happen quickly. Should humans manage to solve the greatest problems facing our species over the next hundreds and thousands of years, our descendants will not be looking at the same waterfalls as we are today. They will be looking at what these waterfalls become, or perhaps what new waterfalls transpire. And I think that's pretty cool. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to know what you thought about it in the comments below and with that like button. I also invite you to subscribe to That's Pretty Cool for more videos where I delve into topics which inspire in me a sense of curiosity and wonder. Thanks again for watching, take care, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.